Well, joining me in studio now is the ANC Youth League President, uh, Mr. Colin Miner. Mr. Miner, thank you so much for joining us this afternoon. All this, uh, the protests that are happening across universities in the country, in your regard, uh, what do you think is the solution? Well, thank you for having me and the listeners at home. Firstly, we must say that uh, the ANC Youth League has always been supporting the call made by students that of government implementing free education for the poor. Uh, but at the same time, we've also said that we condemn in the strongest terms vandalization of property because at the time when government implements free education, there will be no property or buildings where that education would have to be rendered. So the solution to these problems, as we've always said, is the government to implement, the government of the ANC to implement the implementation of that particular resolution which they took in their own Congress uh, in Bulukwan and subsequently affirmed by the Mangawun Congress. So we are begging the students' demand or call for free education, but what we're not supporting is uh, vandalization of property. Right. Now, there's allegations that there's a third force that has um, hijacked the movement, so to speak, and a lot of the student leaders have actually pledged their allegiance with the ANC. What are your views on that? Well, at the moment, we don't want to get into the issue of whether there's third force or not. What we want to get, the space we want to get into is the issue that says the concerns or the demand by the student must be met. So you do not believe that there's a third force that is that has hijacked the movement? Any miscreants or uh, criminality elements in, in this whole process? You know, it's quite unfortunate that, for instance, when this thing, when the movement started last year, students themselves said that uh, they do not want political parties to be part of this because they, this is a, a non-political call. All students from all political formations are making this call. So. It's, if you see what is happening now, uh, currently in Vets, where the national chairperson of the EFF is occupying the center stage, um, addressing uh, students in Vets, which is a problem. But also we want to encourage that uh, we are in a democratic state, we are a constitutional democracy. Students in their numbers at Vets institutions have voted that they want to go back to classes. And we, we support that particular thing because we have also made a call that the commission that has been established by the president to look at the modal modalities of the implementation of free education must be given space and time to conclude. But we further went to say that we want that commission to, to fast track their process because initially they were supposed to report to the president by the end of this year. Uh, we were surprised that uh, they are extending their term to next year. And the situation as is, um, the, the youth or the students can no longer wait. We want the, the commission to fast track um, whatever that they are doing so that they report timelessly to the president so that getting into the new uh, academic year, we are able to be clear as a country could where are we going in right. terms of implementation because of it appears, education? It appears the students are getting very agitated because they want a response from the authorities and they want it now. It, it appears they're not willing to wait. That being said, SASCO has come out and they've been very critical, especially um, towards the economic freedom fighters, saying that they're the very party that is inciting violence, the violence that we're seeing across the universities. Uh, what is your comment on that? I know you have said that you know, we're not trying to politicize the situation, you're not trying to make it a, an ANC or EFF um, issue but these are the elements that are coming out at this moment yeah like i said really one would not have wanted to venture into that particular thing that's what i'm saying we're calling on political parties ngos which may be sponsored uh, by non-south africans for a political agenda not to instigate violence but what we should say all of us as south africans is that the government of the ANC must implement free education and that commission as I said must fast track instead of reporting next year they must make sure that they report by the end of the year and by the way this would not be the first commission that government has appointed to really look into this thing and we as the youth league believe that it is possible it's possible for the ANC government to implement uh, free education so as we're saying we support students on the call they're making but if there's something else that you want to achieve out of this 
genuine call by students who would not support, but who I think will then have to separate the two and deal with the EFF or whoever at another platform so that we don't take our politics to students because what they want is implementation of free education. So we should not, as we are saying, let's depoliticize the matter and right. confront it as South Africans, all of us. But the youth league supports the students. Okay. But leaving students aside, I still want us to speak about politics. The ANC has come out um, this week and said that the alliance is at its weakest. Again, I'll ask you uh, solutions as the ANC Youth League going forward. Well, if you are now, we are now diverting from the fees must fall. Well, you want me to, like you want I me said, to, you do not want yeah, to politicize the yeah, fees must fall. Um, so now I'm speaking on issues that we can yeah, actually politicize, the, and the, that's the ANC. The alliance of the ANC... Uh, we are told that uh, it's at the weakest state, state at the moment. Uh, what, they, what we have resolved on, because there was an NEC meeting now of the ANC over the weekend, that the engagement must ensue in the alliance so that uh, we make anything possible to, to, to make sure that we protect the alliance. As, as, as you know, that a number of provinces of the Communist Party and the YCL have begun to make a call that um, the party must contest the, for the elections that they must stand alone, contest state power. Uh, now, as the Youth League, really, we can't because some of us were not communists. Uh, and, and as the Youth League, you would not really get into that space. Right. Uh, we understand that the alliance has been there, uh, united as it, is, as it has been, but I'm sure we can't have the unity for the sake of it. Uh, if, if the SACP in their majority and, and the other structures feel that uh, they need to contest the state power. Is a discussion that the, the, the SACP must finalize, and if they believe that is the right route, I think they must take that route if they, okay. they believe that that is the right route. But from the ANC and NEC, we said there must be engagement, but there's always been engagement. If you take, for instance, in the Northwest, the SACP makes a call that uh, a particular person in the ANC must lead the ANC as sort of a condition. So if that condition is not met, it means then the alliance will break. So I'm, I'm sure that we would not want to take that route and we will not allow a situation where another part or a component of the alliance dictate to the other who to elect. And I think that would not really be good. If it means then we'll have to break the alliance for that, then let it be. But okay. we need the alliance. But we can't go to the SACP, for instance, and say, elect Colin Maine as the general secretary or we break, hell break loose. It can't be said. All right. So yeah. obviously the alliance is the bigger picture here. Just looking at the entities that constitute the alliance itself, starting with the ANC, factionalism, obviously that has to be sorted if you, you know, if you are to be united so that the whole alliance can work. Uh, what are your comments when it comes to factionalism that we have been seeing within the ANC? Surely you agree that it needs to come to an end? Well, uh, you see, uh, the, the, the question that I'm struggling with is that who is the factionalist in the ANC and who is not a factionalist? Okay. Uh, within within the movement, but when the organisation is that weak, when the ANC is weak, the whole country is weak. So what we need to do is to make sure that we strengthen the African National Congress, uh, to do away with groupings within the African National Congress, and 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 just given what we came from the local government elections, I thought that uh, it, it, it would be important for all of us in the movement to make sure that we unite and confront challenges that are facing the people of South Africa. And we must be an ANC that listens to the people. Um, if you look at the situation, for instance, in Vuan, we should not have had that situation. The ANC was supposed to listen. We would not have a situation where schools were banned. You go to Matadiel, uh, where people of Matadiel are saying we want to remain in case of them. Through the demarcation board, we take them to Eastern Cape. There's a formation of a party called the AIC, and that AIC charged from the African National Congress. So we really ought to be saying, what do we do? So I would not really want to venture into politics of uh, factionalism or not, uh, because factionalism can be interpreted in quite different ways. So we need an ANC that is strong and united. All right, I want to take us back to the students, and I'll try not to politicize. Like you said, um, you're not interested in answering that question. The students keep referring to the Freedom Charter and what it has promised them. Is this something that is a good argument coming from the students? Do you think they are justified? Yeah, yes, ma'am. You see, the ANC, um, the ANC is always known to be a parliament of the people. Now, this parliament of the people, let's say in 1955, 
when uh, our elders met in Cape Town, this call was made already then in 1955. Mm -hmm. um, the ANC League, when it was established in 1944, this call of uh, free education was made. The ANC uh, in Mangaung Conference in Polokwan uh, took this particular resolution, so it's justified. In 2012, they went further to even give it time frames that by 2013, certain things must happen. So these things that the students are saying, they are justifiable, they are there, they are, they are in the resolutions of the African National Congress. So if a government, I was saying to comrades in the National Exec Executive Committee of the EFL that one um, uh, Ethiopian approached me in the last meeting that you see in Ethiopia, as poor as it is, education is free in Ethiopia. Um, and I'm sure in terms of our economy, we are 100 times better than our brothers in Ethiopia. But because they take education serious, and in the ANC government, we have said during the current administration of President Zuma that education is an apex priority. So if it is an apex priority, the government ought to make sure that we implement this call made by students and we depoliticize it. Right. We have seen students, um, as much as it's their right, obviously, to protest, it's enshrined in their constitution. We have seen some very unruly behavior. I'm sure you have witnessed some of that as well. Some of it that appears to be students that are actually threatening um, lecturers and uh, giving a, a perception that, you know, they could be threatened um, violently. What is your message to the students when it comes to this? Well, as, as we have said that... Uh, we are with the students 100 percent but what you also when you say 100 percent do you mean you're also with them when they seem to be threatening lecturers no 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 can i finish yes now what 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 we're saying is that we are with them we support their cause um, and if they remember we have written even an open letter to the minister on, the, on this issue um, but what we were discouraging is when we intimidate others you know it's like just like workers if a particular union dis decides to, tools, to put tools down and members of another union want to go to continue working. It is their right to want to continue working. Now, let's go back to this. Students, 77% of them, 16,000 something, vote mm -hmm. to go back to classes. About 4,000 something, which is 23%, vote not to go to school, not to continue to with classes. Now, we are saying that because we are a constitutional democracy, we must respect the right of those who wants to continue their classes. And these others who do not want to go to class, we are encouraging them to go back to class and we will continue to raise these things sharply. The, the ANC Youth League Provincial Chairpersons and its president will be meeting tomorrow and will then have a press conference on a way forward right. uh, in terms of this particular issue. But the stand of the Youth League would not change that of government making sure that and that uh, we implement the free education we are with the students right and that actually brings me to my next question which is the last as the nc youth league obviously there's the danger that the 2016 academic year could be totally lost this protest has been happening for about two weeks now do you think as a leader yourself as a youth leader especially within the anc perhaps you could have come into the picture a bit earlier to try and uh, see how you can assist in the situation and how you can be heard as a leader well, you see, the, the ANC Youth League is a youth wing of the ruling party. Now, we can make all the noise we are making and say, it like we say, that we support the student. But the actual implementation is then with government. Uh, so we, we're saying that government must really um, come out and smell the coffee and give young people what is rightfully theirs. Uh, we should not negotiate when it comes to the issue of education, which we have said, like I said, that we have defined it as an apex priority. It would be quite unfortunate if some universities will uh, opt to closing uh, universities because of that. But we think that uh, the situation can still be managed. Students uh, must, must, must be allowed those who want to study, to study, and those who are striking to really come back to class, but continue and employ another mechanism or strategies of, of ensuring that there's implementation of free education. Right. But this is a revolution that cannot be stopped, of free education. Clearly the students are resolute in, uh, in their mission and we'll see what happens going forward. Colin Mani, thank you so much for your time. Thank you very much.